Um, the John Connor design is going to be challenging, but the young Arnold in Griffith Park, you're not going to get that until you rip it out of our hands the very last minute when this movie is locked. It is already difficult enough, I guess, to create a human being digitally. It becomes even more difficult if that human being is like such an iconic figure as Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right from the start, we couldn't leave any stone unturned. So our whole process, how we did digital characters in the past, had to be evaluated and changed or invent new technologies wherever possible to just raise the bar. The observatory sequence of the Griffith Park um, sequence that we worked on sort of, you know, splits almost into two, two portions, into two halves. Like the first portion being basically the recreation of the original movie scenes, you know, of the arrival from the young Arnold, and we're basically introducing that young Arnold character traveling back in time. Then the second half and the second part is basically where the storyline deviates a little bit, and that's when young Arnold is basically finding himself like, you know, being exposed or to an opponent, which is basically himself, just at an older, older age and that's um, from there and effectively where we have this sort of face-off between young versus old. I've been waiting for you. First we built the set in New Orleans and shot it practically. Arnold obviously plays the Guardian but there's the entire process of, of youthifying obviously Guardian to turn our 67 year old Arnold Schwarzenegger into a 50 year old version of himself. Then we actually scoured the earth to find basically a bodybuilder uh, by the name of Brett who basically is the only human being on the planet who is almost as big as Arnold was when he was Mr. Universe. It was all sort of choreographed with the stunt double, you sort of acted that out. But what happened throughout the process is we basically had to discard the plate almost entirely. We almost had to say, like, okay, you know, the lens isn't quite right to be, you know, correct enough and close enough to the original footage, and the framing isn't quite right. So we decided basically to go almost full CG. The first process is you build the model, which gets you very, very close to where you want to be. But then at the end of it, you get into this uncanny area when you're looking at it to where you're 5% off, things will look right, but it's that glint behind the eyes, it's the way the light interacts with your skin, all of this incredibly finite detail that separates from something that feels actually alive and living and something that just feels dead. Well, the sculpt of his cheekbones feel a little bit better. He still, his face feels just a little bit wider. And I think if we take that down, and so we really feel like, I think it'll accentuate the cheek line more, make the, uh, the jawline more defined, which is so Arnold. The review process with um, our clients um, started off, you know, at the beginning mostly with um, us working together with Yannick, basically. And we sort of had regular review sessions with him twice or three times a week, where we went through the processes and the steps. With a character like the young Arnold, it was something that you know took pretty much you know our entire time from the start of the show when we first started working on this project all the way to the end where we literally continuously built and refined this young Arnold character. Then further down the line when it came more to the shot production we started you know being more and more exposed to the filmmakers like Ellen Taylor on David Ellison and, and Dana Goldberg. It was a highly creative process but also a very time consuming process for us to you know study and research like what Arnold um, yeah it was like back then effectively. <laughs> nice night for a walk. Wash day tomorrow. Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean, right.